I think the Arctic has always been attractive, at least to anybody with a sense of adventure. It's one of the last frontiers you can go to. It's so spacious, there are so few people. It's so unspoiled and clean. It has that impression of uh, being a very harsh environment, so there's a sense of challenge to being here, that you can live with this and, and the everyday realities of cold temperatures and winds and storms and the isolation. Uh, let's say when I first came up, April, um, it was light season, and uh, I thought it was pretty cold and uh, really vast, eh? really vast, like uh, the, the landscaping. You just had a, a feeling of, I guess, you know, open landscaping. It was really different. It was like uh, being on another planet, I guess. When I went up uh, the first time, I was fairly young, I was 18 years old. Uh, I wasn't really expecting anything. It was a big adventure. Because I was young, I can honestly say I was not really prepared for the drastic change in lifestyles you'd have to go through. Perhaps the older you get, the more easier it is to adjust to such a, a night and day change. It's hard for me to say whether I feel anything in terms of the isolation and being with the same people because I haven't really been here that long. I've only been up here six weeks. Uh, after a number of months, I'm sure the, the tensions and the stresses build. Hi, honey. Here I am, right next to the unnavigable polar ice. It says so right here. Why don't you look up in your atlas, and, and when you find it, draw a picture of me and the big heart beside it. There's only 10 of us at the station. That's 10 people for 500 kilometers. Now, the landscape is so bleak, so savage, so naked. It's very, very naked. There isn't a single tree for hundreds of kilometers. It is truly Remote Arctic Tundra. Get in the middle of an adventure, honey! Gotta go to dinner now, though. Miss ya. Bye! small so uh, the way of life is quite relaxed uh, you, you don't nobody gets ulcers up here and uh, you know you can go about your business in uh, I'd say a normal fashion at work the, uh, again the, the atmosphere is much more relaxed so uh, I guess everything is just 
relaxing and uh, not as uh, hectic as in, uh, you would find in a big city. weather observations. These uh, observations are sent afterwards throughout the uh, network and another part of it too is that we give information concerning the weather to different users. Might be uh, private aviation, commercial aviation or general public that would call us for uh, whatever information they, they want from the weather office. The main challenge is, is to try to outguess nature, if you want, uh, trying to find out if the forecasts are good and uh, if it's going to uh, happen exactly the way the forecasters have predicted. Tomorrow, uh, cloudy with occasional snow again, and the high will be around minus 24. Welcome. So I guess dealing with the public and uh, trying to outguess nature is, uh, I'd say, the main the main interesting thing in the, uh, the weather office. Le travail en est un euh, vraiment international de, dans tous les pays. It's really a job with an international perspective. There are meteorological services in every country. Information about the weather is sent to the public throughout the world. We all apply the same scientific principles. It's a job that is done everywhere on the planet. The Chinese, Russians, Japanese, we all do the same observations. There's a great deal of international cooperation in weather analysis, maybe more than in economic studies, for example, or any other UN issues. dark, except for about two hours every afternoon when there's really a nice glow in the sky. I phoned you last night. There was no answer. I hope you were having fun. Not too much fun, of course. Save a little fun for me. Maybe it wasn't such an isolated posting. You know, we, you could come up here, but we'll be together in six months. Six months. It's just as well that I have long shifts and consuming interest in the weather, because it's Really nothing else to do. Wish I brought some sort of hobby. Thank God for my consuming interest in the weather. I miss you very much. Bye. responsible for the station and uh, I administer the MET programs, weather programs, and also uh, take care of the logistics um, to keep the station in operation. As far as the station itself or the facilities, um, they're, they're all the same, but uh, Mobay would be the most isolated because of its uh, geographical location. We're way off in the Western Arctic, so we're not exposed to any sort of traffic uh, going up to the North Pole or uh, military traffic going up to alert. So I would say uh, it's, it's the most isolated. People that work best are people that are independent, that uh, are straightforward and open. You know, people that are not going to 
run to me as soon as they don't have the same color socks on or whatever, you know. I call them whiners, you know, people that are not going to whine for little things that Today was hectic having my first plane because even though you may run through in practice, it's never quite the same when you're actually doing it. And on top of that, when you run through in a practice for a plane, you don't have all the other kind of distractions of doing your job at the same time and dealing with other people. Bradley's 24, this is Mulbay Radio. I at your ETA at 1547 at flight 070. Okay, Mulbay, clear. Have a good flight. Yeah, we'll talk later. <laughs> Because of the shift work, you're required to work um, being a split shift and sometimes being faced with either constant light or constant dark. You forget if it's AM or PM. <clears throat> Thank God for the digital watch. When you're on runs or when we set up our balloon, you go to work at 6 o'clock in the morning. You work technically until 11 o'clock in the morning. And then again, that same day, you go back in at 6 o'clock in the evening and work until 11 o'clock in the evening. You may sometimes end up doing that for four days in a row. It's okay once you get used to it. It just takes a long time to get your body used to the fact that you cannot sit down and get one straight eight hours sleep in. You learn to catnap when you can. from you? No whiskey from you either? I did ask you to send whiskey, didn't I? I'll tell you why. The guy in the room next to me. Well, sometimes I leave my door open in my haste to rush to release the weather balloons. Well, I think maybe the guy... Well, the whiskey's going somewhere, you know? The lasagna was great last night. What else? I'm getting good at Wheel of Fortune. I'm winning. What else? This guy... Turn the satellite dish around and we watch some uh, Norwegian TV. Fascinating. Fascinating. I don't understand a word of it. I phoned you last night. No answer.
You have to be able to, to deal with people, even if it means, uh, you know, sacrificing sometimes. You gotta be like a, a mother sometimes, eh? You know, you gotta make sacrifices for other people, listen to their problems, even if you don't feel like it. Sympathy or, or a thank you goes a long way up here. After a while, you know, they start to wonder, you know, what, what they're doing, you know, their purpose. They sort of lose track of their purpose, you know, why they're here. Does it really matter if they put the weather out every hour, you know? Does anybody read it? Does anybody use it? Stuff like that. So people need to be uh, encouraged. You have to learn how to perhaps conceal a lot of times your true feelings towards other people to keep things perhaps as professional as possible because you are involved with these people essentially 24 hours a day. Saying what you mean is sometimes uh, not the wisest thing. Normally, it's a great practice in diplomacy and how to get along with people and keep things just smoothly rolling. Getting hold of things, if you want to order anything in, because we only get a flight every three weeks, your mail only comes every three weeks, and if you don't get any, you get very upset. If you want to order anything, it takes six, nine weeks before it actually gets to you by the time it goes through the mail and comes back. So waiting for things, especially when you've got money to spend and you can't spend it. late for my shift today. Have you rid of me yet? Who could play for my shift today? Have you rid of me yet? Maybe this is the wrong posting for me. I could do with something a little more convivial. very long. It lasts for about oh, roughly 10 months of the year. In March, the spring comes in, comes in and it's quite nice, but uh, still, the, the winter is very long. There's a lot of snow and uh, you get the blizzards, the cold. Like if the weather is very cold, there's not much to do outside. You, you, you don't go out, so... And uh, you're far from your family, and uh, you only, the only contact you have is mostly by phone. So it, uh, you're far from all your friends that you've made throughout the years, and uh, that's some of the disadvantages of Frobisher Bank. It's a different kind of a beauty. It's more savage, and really, it's it's what I, I like about it. And if you go out on the land, uh, like hunting or uh, on a ski do, you will see some very very nice uh, what I'd call picture postcards uh, beauty. And it's uh, I don't know for my part, I, I like it very much. It's very beautiful.
Well, sometimes when we go to Montreal on holidays, uh, we look at the people who are running all over the place, and it's uh, it's it's weird because we're not used to that. We're used to, you know, walking very slowly and relaxing and having fun. So that's uh, that's one of the advantages. Most people that we know, uh, we work together. Like uh, Saturday, we had a supper for somebody that was leaving in a couple of weeks, and all of his friends were there. And most of them are all people that work with him and uh, with their wives. Even in Frobisher there's a French Canadian association. It's a grouping of all the French speaking. And uh, we get to know all the people because we live mainly all, all around the same area. So we, we, we see them at work, we see them outside of work. So you get to know the people much better and it makes you much closer. Ordinarily in uh, some, a big city, even your co-workers, you would work with them during the day, but uh, that would be just about it. You wouldn't visit them socially or very little compared to uh, Frobisher Bay. to think that I'm not entirely suited to a career in meteorological technology. Who really cares about the weather? Do you care about the weather? I don't think so. Then why should I care about the weather? Sure, I like, I like the cloud stuff, and I kind of like the air pressure stuff, but I never really quite like the minus 60 below stuff. The, oh boy, it's freezing stuff. Come here, it's pitch black for 22 hours of the day. There's only 10 people for 500 kilometers. I don't like five of them. I don't like six of them, and your girlfriend doesn't write you. Well, weather doesn't have quite the same allure it did in Mrs. Hyland's geography class, and, and I just want to quit. I got a nice to I want to quit. I want to quit. Sounds nice. Sounds I quit. 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 for at least a couple of years. So it's part and parcel of the job. It's something you're told before you even go through the interview process. So it's something to be expected, I think, if you're not willing to go isolated and see the Arctic, live in the Arctic. Um, it's really not the place to, to be for you right now. 